views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Moms, are you ready to become enlightened, empowered, and stress-free? Well, get ready because you are about to tune into vibrant, powerful moms helping everyday women create an extraordinary life with Debbie Pokornik. Each week, Debbie discusses topics to help you become self-aware, inspired, and on track to create the life you crave. It's time to stop settling and start thriving. And it all begins now on Transformation Talk Radio. This is Debbie Pokornik, your host of Vibrant Powerful Moms. Today we're going to talk about a very important hormone in our bodies called cortisol. What it is, how it can hurt us, and one thing that you can do right away to start getting it under control. This is an important topic for you to know about because most people aren't aware of how they're wired and what they might be doing to actually increase their own stress and create some of the many health issues that can come with having too much stress in your life. Lacking energy, feeling overwhelmed, overreacting, these things can all stop you from being the vibrant, powerful mom that you're meant to be. And these are just a few of the direct results of -of out-of-whack cortisol. If I had my way, this kind of topic would be added into the school curriculum so that our future generations could start the path to awareness much earlier. Of course, they'd also have to learn about relationship building, masculine, feminine energy, and many other things that I hold near and dear in these classes, but Since they haven't asked me to create the education curriculum yet, I will settle for sharing it with as many adults as I can in the hopes that they will learn to embrace it, role model it, and at some point even teach it to the children in their lives. So let's look at a regular day in life and see if I can illustrate for you how cortisol flows. Let's imagine that you're in a meeting at work. Or if your main job is being a mom, let's imagine that you're at some kind of a meeting because you probably are involved as a volunteer or maybe you have a little part-time job or you help with different fundraisers. And so imagine that you're in an important meeting, training, or some kind of very formal event where your phone would be on vibrate only. And uh, and you wouldn't want to disrupt things. You wouldn't want to have to get up and leave. So there you are sitting, paying attention, and all of a sudden, your phone buzzes. You glance down and see that it's your child's school calling. Your heart skips a beat and you wonder, is something wrong? At that moment, cortisol is released in your body. Now, of course, because of Murphy's Law... You're called upon at that moment to share something with everyone else. You stammer a little, tell yourself your child's probably fine, and you start your talk. But your phone buzzes again. Your pulse is dancing in your veins, and you're finding it a bit difficult to think clearly. It's taking every bit of your self-control not to just run out of the meeting. Why are they calling me? They never call me. Finally, You're done talking. A whole seven minutes have gone by. You have no idea if you even said what you had meant to say, but you don't care. You excuse yourself and leave the room. Immediately, you push the callback option and wait for your phone to ring, except it doesn't. You're in the dreaded dead zone. You stare at your phone. Oh, zero bars. It worked fine in the meeting room. How could it not work in the hallway? You frantically search for the magic spot where your phone will work. You end up going all the way outside before you can finally dial, and your phone starts to ring just as an ambulance starts down the street. You can't hear anything, and the butterflies in your stomach are growing into bat-sized creatures. You think you hear the school answer, 
So you shout to hold on and you wait for the ambulance to hurry on by. Finally, the ambulance and its siren fade into the distance and you tell the school who you are and ask why they were calling. Oh, just a minute. The secretary puts you on hold. Three minutes go by before she finally returns. Oh, sorry about that. I was hoping to catch your son before he went out to recess, but I missed him. It was no big deal, really. We're just doing positive reinforcement calls, and so your son was calling to tell you that he did really well sitting through assembly today. Does that sound like something that could happen to you? If not with the school, then maybe with a photocopier breaking down, or, you know, when you really need to copy something quickly, it's very important. Or maybe it's waiting to tell someone something that you think might upset them so you really don't want to tell them and the right opportunity is just never showing up so you're constantly thinking about this. It's like this huge elephant in the room whenever they're with you. The point is, any incident that raises intense emotions but doesn't require you to be stronger and faster would qualify. Now let me tell you what's happening in your body during this time. The moment your phone buzzed the first time or whenever the initial emotional spike was, your hypothalamus, which has no access to the outside world, so it relies on your senses, your sight, your hearing, touch, smell, and even your thoughts in order to know what's going on around you, it receives a code red. Okay, that moment that the phone buzzed and you thought, oh, what's going on, right? Your heart skipped a beat. That is a code red. Now, a code red results in an automatic message from the hypothalamus to the pituitary to send out cortisol. Cortisol makes you faster and stronger. Our brains are wired in a very primitive way. So they're assuming that if something is scaring you or upsetting you, that you're going to need to be faster and stronger. The pituitary relays this message to your adrenals, which are these little pyramids that sit on the top of your kidneys, and it tells it to release cortisol. So the adrenal releases cortisol. Now, cortisol is a life-giving hormone, a master hormone, they call it, and your body does not want to waste it. So there's a feedback loop where a little bit of the cortisol that was released makes its way back up to the hypothalamus to say, all's good, cortisol's been released. In a normal situation, this would turn off the cortisol switch. The problem with this setup is that if the code red or the danger signal continues to come in, the cortisol messenger is not even acknowledged. It's like your brain is in lockdown until the crisis has been dealt with. Now, let me make sure that you're with me on this. Your brain does not have access to the outside world, so it doesn't know the difference between you finding your child at the top of a tall ladder that someone forgot leaning against the house or a bee buzzing around your head. If you push the alarm, it's a code red. End of story. In the situation I just shared, the cortisol shutoff message is not received because the code red message continues to come in. The phone buzzing started the sequence, but then you're called upon to talk right at that moment, which can seem like another code red. That your phone buzzing again sets it off. The fact that your phone is getting no signal when you go out in the hallway is code red. As you try to search for a signal, it can be code red. When you get outside and the ambulance comes down the road and now you can't hear is a code red. And then when the secretary says, oh, just a minute, and puts you on hold, that's a code red. And you know what? Probably every single thought that you had in those three minutes while you waited was a code red. So let's say that all of that happened in about 20 minutes. Cortisol has been releasing the whole time. Now here's the problem. You have all this cortisol surging through your body and not being needed. I mean, 
if you ran down the stairs to get outside, then, you know, you might have needed a tiny bit of it. But otherwise, you don't need to be faster and stronger in this situation. Your body doesn't want to get rid of the cortisol, though. So it stores it. And there's a lot of different places that it can do that. In fact, one of them is the the proteins that the thyroid uses to work properly. The cortisol can bind onto that, making it impossible for your body to break it down into the free T3 that it needs for the thyroid to work properly. So it can look like you have low thyroid, when in fact your thyroid is fine and no amount of thyroid medication is going to help you feel better. It can also appear as insulin resistance, like diabetic or pre-diabetic, because the cortisol can bind to the lock that would normally be where insulin would bind to open the door and bring in the things the cell needs in order to break down the glucose. It can also result in decreased estrogen, and estrogen is always kept in balance with progesterone in order for you to feel good. Now, these two reproductive hormones are also made in part in the adrenals. Some of it's made in the ovaries, of course, but it's also made in the adrenals. And so because cortisol is a life-giving hormone, your body will actually steal ingredients from reproductive hormones because you don't have to be able to reproduce to live, but you do need to have cortisol to live. This can result in all kinds of different health problems like uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, PMS, uh, bad cramps, even less intense but still very problematic things like unhealthy hair and lacking confidence. Speaking of confidence, extra cortisol is often stored in the fat around a person's middle that we call it, you know, the muffin top or um, spare tire. (laughs) And once cortisol is attached to the fat, your body doesn't want to break it down no matter what. So even though you exercise like crazy and you diet and you're trying so hard to get rid of this fat, your body will take fat from anywhere else before it will take that fat that has the cortisol attached. There's more problems that can arise, but I think I've made my point. (laughs) So think about that for a moment. How many times a day is your brain being given a code red, a danger signal, when in fact, it's really more like a frustrating situation, like maybe you forgot your yogurt in your lunch, or there's a spider walking across the floor of the room. It's likely you receive this way too much. And that's why living on autopilot and just reacting rather than understanding what's really going on and ensuring your responses are relative to the situation is really important. One of my mentors, Stacy Martino, likes to say, you can live your life by default or you can live it by design. Going off of autopilot is living life by design. So let me just summarize a few of the key points that I think are critical to understanding cortisol. Number one, cortisol is a master hormone that is released anytime you're in a stressful situation. It does many more important things in the body, but this is a piece of what it does. Incidentally, too much cortisol also causes your body to be stressed. So it's one of those, you know, chicken and the egg thing you don't even always know which problem came first. Number two, cortisol makes you faster and stronger. It's similar to adrenaline in some ways. So it's very important in emergency situations that require you to run fast, to climb a tree, to lift something heavy. But it's not required when you're late for a meeting, when you can't get the photocopier to work, when your child won't take a bath, or when a driver cuts you off on the way home. Number three, cortisol is also responsible for how calm, cool, and collected that you feel throughout the day. How refreshed you feel upon waking up in the morning. It's responsible for many food cravings, including voluntarily eating healthy, dense, nutrient foods. 
It also creates sugar cravings, <laughs> big time, chocolate, coffee, those kinds of things. It affects how proactive you are, and on and on. So it's a very important hormone. Number four, too much of it will wreak havoc in your body. I already mentioned thyroid, insulin, fat, and reproductive hormone issues, but it's also a high amount of it is linked to multiple sclerosis, insomnia, to brain health, and even to bone health. So it's really important we're aware. And finally, number five, a continual demand for cortisol can also hurt and potentially burn out your adrenals, creating a whole other set of very serious health problems. Cortisol is not a monster. You need it to live. And once you understand what you're doing to overuse it and learn how to balance it, you will truly feel at your best in life. So what's the answer? Well, let me give you a few things that you can try. Number one, notice your thoughts and limit the danger signals. This sounds simple, and it is, except <laughs> simple and easy are not the same thing. So if you've never really been one to tune into your thoughts, then this will be especially difficult. Now, if you've already listened to my first podcast, which was all about paying attention to your inner critic and inner wisdom, then hopefully you've already started to pay attention to your thoughts. So start by switching off autopilot and noticing what you were thinking, especially when difficult situations arise. In a situation like we just talked about, you might take a deep breath when your phone buzzes the second time and send the thought to your brain that all is fine. I've got this. Even if it turns out the school was calling you because your child is hurt, you still don't need all that cortisol surging through your body to be at your best. In fact, this type of situation actually diverts blood from your brain, making you less smart than you would normally be. So not controlling this can cause you to make bad decisions as well. And incidentally, excess cortisol has been shown to actually shrink your brain over time. Take charge of your thoughts in these situations and start consciously sending the message that you are okay. An example from my own life where I really struggled with this is when I'd be getting ready to go out and do a presentation. I was already rather tense because speaking in front of people is not an easy thing for me to do. So even though I'd given myself lots of time to get ready, I found that I would go into this autopilot mode and I would start rushing from thing to thing and thinking, okay, I got to do this and I got to get that and I got to, okay, quick, oh, get coffee. Oh no, I tripped, you know, <laughs> and I would put myself into a high cortisol spin, which is not going to help me. So instead, I realized that I needed to take control and consciously send the message to my body, all's good, I've got this, everything's fine, we're under control, relax. The more I learned to do this, the less excess cortisol was pumping through my body. The second thing you can do, pay attention to your breathing, breathe deep. <laughs> <laughs> Breathing deep into your belly is an excellent way to calm your system, and it actually helps your body switch from that fight, flight, and freeze nervous system, which is when your body is actually preparing for battle, okay? It thinks you're at war, and so it's getting the cortisol and the adrenaline flowing, and it's, it's shortening your breath so that you can be fast and strong and do what you need to do. But you don't want to be in that nervous system more than on the rare occasion where you really need to be faster, stronger, and so on. So what this deep breath does is it actually hits sensors when your diaphragm pushes down and your breath pushes out your belly. It hits these sensors that switches you from that fight and flight battle type nervous system over to the rest and recharge nervous system. This is where all the cleaning, recharging, building, all the stuff that will make you feel stronger and more capable and, and good happens. 
So breathing deep into your belly will help you to stop pumping cortisol. And it also helps with the cleanup of the excess cortisol. In my stress programs, I often suggest that people create little breathe cards and stick them around on their uh, steering wheel, on their mirror, in different places, just to remind themselves to breathe deep. It's so good for us and so important. And yet most of us have learned how to be really efficient breathers. So we start just breathing into our chest and that immediately tells our body, because remember, our body is very primitively wired. And so it immediately tells it that you're in danger. And there you go into your battle zone, which is your fight and flight. The third tip I have for you is to get the oxytocin flowing. Now, oxytocin is another hormone that actually helps you to burn off excess cortisol. And it, it makes you feel loving. It's the bonding hormone. It's very important in the birth of a baby, but it goes way beyond that. So oxytocin floods your body with this beautiful feeling and it also helps to repair, recharge, and help you to be healthy. I talk about how to get this hormone flowing in my free report, Five Secrets to Being a Vibrant Mom, which is available on my website at empoweringenergy.com, totally free. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, then I highly recommend you go to my site, empoweringenergy.com, and get yourself a copy. If you already have my ABCs of Stress Busting booklet, it's in there as well. So you're good to go. The fourth tip I want to give you is to enjoy a massage at least once a month. Massages are a wonderful way to stimulate the vagus nerve. Now, when the vagus nerve is stimulated, you actually get oxytocin flowing. So it's a double whammy. This will relax you and it helps your body to move out toxins. Now, one thing I want to mention is that massages should be a pleasurable experience. There's little moments where things might hurt as the therapist works out some stuff, but it shouldn't be painful because if it is, you're going to get more cortisol flowing. You're going to have trouble relaxing. So if that's the case, find a different massage therapist because there's many different ones that do it in different ways. And when you find the right one, you will know it. According to Dr. Sarah Gottfried, who actually trained me in the hormone cure and is the reason I talk about hormones as much as I do, studies show that a deep tissue massage actually lowers cortisol and increases oxytocin. So, great thing to do. The final tip I want to share with you, number five, is to refuse to worry. Worrying is something humans do that is never helpful. It does not get people home safely. It doesn't improve their health or change the weather. Worry zaps you of your strength in the moment, and it creates a code red for cortisol. It is not a genetic thing. I cannot tell you how many people try to tell me they have no choice. They come by it honestly. Their mom or their dad was a worry wart. Yes, that means it's been role modeled for them, but really it's just an excuse for not wanting to break a problematic pattern in their life. It's okay to make a plan for things going awry, but it doesn't help you or anyone to carry worry around with you. So notice when you worry and make a point of stopping this energy drain right in its tracks I use a, a worry map that I created to work with people, which guides them through the worry process using simple questions like, you know, does that worry belong to you? Because oftentimes it doesn't even belong to you and you're worrying about it anyway. Another question is, is there anything you can do about it? Because if there's something you can do and it makes sense for you to do it, you're willing to do it then that might be what you want to do so that you can feel good, that you can make a difference. But just worrying isn't going to help you at all. So how do you take action? And then probably the most important part of the worry map 
is when you get a no to any of the questions and you go to the category that says, then let it go. And in that area, I give three different tips for how you can let something go. Because honestly, people often struggle with that. I know I did for a long time. What does that mean, let it go? I'm not consciously holding on to anything. So there you have it. Five things you can use to start standing in your power and decreasing the amount of cortisol that you have flowing in your body. This is nowhere near an exhaustive list, but it is a good start that can influence your health, your parenting, your productivity, and virtually every area of your life in a positive way. But only if you choose to put some of these ideas into action. With much respect for you and the journey you are on, this is Debbie Pokornik wishing you a vibrant and powerful day. You've been listening to Vibrant Powerful Moms with host Debbie Pokornik. If you've enjoyed this show, please give us a shout out and leave us a positive review. To find out more about Debbie and her sisterhood of vibrant, powerful moms, visit empoweringenergy.com. That's empowering with letters N R G dot com. This is Debbie Pokornik with a moment for standing in your power. It's quite possible when you're listening to a show like mine that you might be wondering, how can you tell me that I'm perfect and provide me information on personal development all at the same time? It raises a really great question and one that I really would love to address. Often when people think that something is perfect, they think that changing it would be wrong. This way of thinking can trap them into seeing life as stagnant rather than the dynamic process that it actually is. So let me clarify what I mean by perfect. A newborn child is perfect from the moment she is born. There might be things about her that you would like her to grow out of, like maybe her sleeping habits or making strange to her father. However, you recognize that these aren't deficiencies, they're just preferences, areas that you'd like her to grow in. As a child grows, she remains perfect. Her silly moments, her tantrums, even her ability to push your buttons might not make her fun to be around at times, but these traits are a piece of who she is. They do not make her any less perfect. At the same time, as you recognize this, you also acknowledge that unless something's getting in the way of the child's development, she's going to grow physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. In other words, this child is expected to grow and to change, but she isn't any less perfect now. This assumption simply suggests that growing and the change that comes with it is what life's all about. So when I suggest that there is work you could do to really reach your full potential, to open yourself up to be the vibrant, powerful woman that you are meant to be, I want you to know that you're starting from a place of already being perfect. You are not broken. You're not missing anything. There aren't pieces that need to be fixed. This is simply part of how we grow. And when you follow your own intuition, your own desire to learn things and are led to personal development programs, that just shows that you're tuned in to what you really need to evolve as a human. So continue on being the perfect person that you already are and do it with freedom to grow in whatever direction you want to grow. Calling all moms, it's time to awaken your vibrant, intuitive, loving self in every area of your life. Join host Debbie Pokornik as she shares thoughts, stories, and tools to help you stand in your power. Listen to Vibrant Powerful Moms Helping Everyday Women Create Extraordinary Lives, Mondays at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. For more information about Debbie, visit EmpoweringEnergy.com. That's empowering with letters N-R-G.com.